after the discussion of what are the different types of the parallel course in the last video, now we are going to try to learn how to find out the resultant component. As we know that when the body is going to be subjected to the two forces, that body may not be moved in the two, either one of the force direction. It will move in the resultant components that we have seen in the last class. For the parallel forces also, we need to find out the resultant component. We do have the three types we do have. The first case, I'm going to be taking the, the like the parallel forces. It, in this case, what will happen? The two forces have the equal magnitudes and they are moving in the same direction. So then for that one, I'm going to be giving the definition, the resultant of two parallel forces acting on the same direction. So they are going to be acting in the same direction and they are the two parallel forces. So then how could you calculate the resultant component for that one? So we do have seen in the concurrent forces, number of forces are passing through the same point, but the motion of that particle is going to be existed in the, the resultant direction of the force. And in this case, I'm going to be taking the one body, one rigid body I have taken. At the same time, I'm going to be taking the, the center line of this part. So then in this case, I would like to make the body subjected to the two parallel forces as per this definition. The two parallel forces at a distance, this is going to be say the A and this is going to be the point B. So from this one, I'm going to be adding the force here, it is going to be the P. And this force is going to be acting and this Q. So in this case, we need to assume that P is equal to Q because it must be have the, the same magnitude. When the two equal parallel forces are there, then what is the resultant direction? Which direction it will going to be moved? So then in this case, what will happen for simplification of this one? So I'm going to be taking the, uh, the superposition uh, principle I'm using by addition of the two forces which are going to be opposite in direction. So to find out the resultant component, we are adding another two forces you can see. So when I'm going to be joining these two, so this point I'm going to be say the I. So that intersection point with the center. So then what will happen in this case, at the point B, I'm going to be applying the load S. And similarly, at this point, the load S I'm going to be applying. These two are the forces are going to be the superpositions we are using. At the same time, they are in the opposite direction. Right? So then finally, the magnitude S and the S is going to be the same. So because of this addition of these forces, P as well as the S and the Q S, then what will happen? The resultant component will going to be generated in the system. So that's going to be, I'm going to say, so this is going to be your P1 and this is going to be your Q1. So P1 and the Q1 are the resultant components of here, the P and S and the Q1 is going to be the resultant component of Q and S. So then what will happen? To find out the resultant component for this part, I'm going to be extending, I'm taking the projections of the line of action of this P1 as well as the Q1. So then in this case what happened, I'm going to be extending in this direction where these two are going to be intersecting each other. Then I can say this is going to be the point O and it is going to be consist of the P1 and it is going to be consist of the Q1 suppose. So then in this case what will happen? Once the P1 is going to be reached and intersecting at point O, then I'm going to be resolving the forces into X component as well as the Y component. In this case, the P1, what is the X component? This is the S. And similarly, vertical component, this is the P. And similarly for the Q1, vertical component is the Q and the horizontal component is the S. So then I'm going to be resolving the forces in this direction, this is the S and this is going to be the X. So in this case, these two forces are going to be have the same magnitude and they existed on the collinear in the collinear direction. So that these two are going to be vanishes. So then what other forces will you have? This is going to be the P1 force is going to be there. So that's going to be acting in this direction. This is the P and the Q force is also acting in the same direction. So P and Q are going to be finally, we got in the same line. So then, what is the resultant component in this case? The resultant component means the board object is going to be moving in this direction. So that's the resultant component R is equal to, because here the two forces acting on the same direction. So then that's R is equal to P plus Q we are going to be calling. Right? So then in this case what will happen? So that resultant component P plus Q is equal to that is going to be the resultant component. So this way, the object is going to be trying to move in the same direction of the P as well as the Q. But in this case, can you observe this? This is going to be the distance it is going to be made in here. So that distance we are going to be consider. Once we calculated the resultant component magnitude that is equal to P plus Q. 
So then we need to find out the, the line of action or the position of the resultant component we need to calculate. For this one, I'm going to be taking the triangles here, O, I, A. At the same time, this is going to be the force P and this is the force Q. We do have the two forces that I'm going to be projecting on this P1 extension. So this is going to be. So in this case, I'm going to be say this is the point C and this is the point D. So then this is the point E and this is the point F, suppose if you are going to be considering. So the same that the triangle I'm going to be taking here, this is going to be the point I and this is the point O. So then this is going to be the extension line of your Q1, P1 and then it is going to be the point A. Similarly, we do have here, this is the point C as well as the D. From this triangle, we are going to be writing the O I by I A is equal to, what is the formula? O C by C D we are going to be taking. What is the O C? So that I am going to be taking here in this direction, O C by C D. So in this case, we do have here, that's going to be the force S is available, at the same time, the P is going to be available. For this part, I am going to be taking, this is going to be the P by S we are going to be taking. What is the P? O C is equal to the magnitude of the this is going to be the magnitude of your P and C D is equal to that is the magnitude of your S we are going to be considering and similarly if I am going to be considering this triangle in this case so now I am going to be taking for this triangle that's the triangle I am going to be say this is going to be the O the B okay sorry this is the O I and this direction it is going to be the B and I am going to be intersecting this part so then this is going to be the E and F two points are there. Similarly, I am going to be writing O I by I B. So that's going to be O I by I B because we do have the similar triangles. That's going to be O E by E F. We are going to be getting. What is the O E already we told that's going to be your Q magnitude and that's going to be E F. That's going to be the S. We do have these two equations one as well as the two. Once you are going to be dividing these two equations, so then what I am going to be getting O I by I A divided by O I by I B. So, so that's going to be 1 divided by 2. So these two equations I am going to be taking, o, this is going to be O I by I A divided by O I by I B that is equal to P by S by Q by S. So in this case S S will going to cancel, I O is going to be cancelled. From this equation, I am going to be taking, that's going to be IB by IA, Q is going to be cancelled, then this is going to be the P by S, we will get it. This way, we can find out the, the position of your resultant component which is going to be existed. So that means, IB is going to be the this part, IA is going to be this part. That means, the position of this going to be resultant component existed exactly at the middle of these two the points distance. So after the derivation of this I B by I A is equal to P by Q and we are going to say the same thing in terms of the, the definition here. So the, the resultant of the two the resultant of the two like parallel forces acts parallel to them and it's a position it's a position such that it divides the distance between the, the points of application. The distance it is going to be dividing the points of applications in the ratio which is inversely proportional to the to their magnitudes. So that's already we will have discussion. So then what will happen in this case? So the distance, the position of the resultant component is going to be existed exactly here. The middle point of this A as well as the B. Suppose this Q and the P they are going to be like parallel forces are going to be acting. Then the resultant component is going to be is going to be existed exactly at the position. So then IB by IA is inversely proportional to their forces. There we can see this IA is going to be in these directions we are going to get. That is the, the definition of this part.